Please note that this video contains spoilers for the subject and the series and or franchise leading up to this entry. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Suicide Squad movie thoughts. I'm going to dive right into my notes and start with the mid credits scene. I thought it was fine. At first I was like, does the world's greatest detective really need to talk to this other character to get information about the, the Justice League? But I don't know, I suppose, you know, there are things that there's information that Amanda Waller could gather that he would have trouble also. I don't know. But I do appreciate that it you know, they they do both give the other, offer the other something. And I like that it ends with excuse me. Batflake directly telling her, if you don't get rid of the Suicide Squad, the Justice League will get rid of it. You know, that that's bad flag. That's Batman right there. And it's it's really convenient that the you know when when Ike is you know captured by the the Joker that that happens to be when the the squad is being put together and sent out you know it's not like joker had been watching for a while and then he could tell okay this is no no it just happens that ike has worked up a debt and then they hand him over to the joker and that happens to be the same time as and ike of course knows we we already knew that ike knows about it but yeah The ending is too upbeat. I'm, I'm not saying it's a complete happy ending, but, you know, basically, I, I feel like the, 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 you know, the executives were like, okay, Man of Steel, people said the ending had big problems. Dawn of Justice, people really hated the ending. We have to do at least one big crowd-pleasing ending, so it ends with the protagonists defeating the evil, and they gain something also, and there's good dramatic, you know, growth and some resolution and such, but yeah, it just, it really doesn't, it's especially concerned, really, this should have had the darkest ending of all three movies, but yeah, now the I really don't think that I get what they were going for when Deadshot gets to spend some time with his daughter there at the end and you know he's like helping her with math you know that's it's it's a sweet moment. I, I don't think it completely belongs in this movie, like, like I've already said, to a beat. But then they start bringing assassination into it when that was decidedly 15 minutes at the most before that takes place. He imagines his daughter saying, you can't be with us if you pull that trigger. And he's like, I, I still have to. Even if, for one thing, then giving him time with her is a little... I, I feel like the... Maybe there should have, at the very least have been, you know, you took the shot, you knew that that might take you away from her, we'll give you a little time. And then the scene we get. We get. And especially the, the moment that she brings assassination into it, he should be like, let's, let's leave that out. Hey, if if you want to to, I, I get it. It's it's you know it's supposed to be a little joke. You know, oh, you know she suddenly is talking about 
assassination when they're talking about math, you know, but if you're gonna go there just the moment that she brings assassination, they, they already have him sort of pause and like, okay, that was, I didn't expect her to go there, then, you know, how about, well, let's, we're not bringing assassination into this. Not until you're a little older. Something like that. But as it is, it just really feels, it, it doesn't fit the, the rest. It really fits Amanda Waller perfectly that she genuinely, she sent Rick to make sure that she would have something, you know, to, to get June Moon to make sure that she would have something on him. And, you know, the bit with where they had to rip out her heart, that worked pretty decently. I feel like that MacGuffin got a, a decent treatment over the course. You know, you, you have the, you know, how, how can we control this incredibly powerful, oh, don't worry, I have her heart right here. And then, you know, she gets Incubus and, and then Amanda stabs it. And it's also like, she didn't just do that to say, you know, come home. No, no, no. She is furious with June Moon's alter ego right now. She is, yeah, just plowing through and, yeah, you know, and then, okay, well, how do we get heart? We have to get her. So they, yeah. And then they, the, the, Yeah, and then they put the heart into her, and then, you know, it gets cut out. I, I want to say Harley cuts it out, and then they they get it, and then, you know, Rick crushes it. And I feel like June Moon's alter ego being able to go anywhere, it, it used that pretty decently, although I'm not certain why she needed to be standing stock still with the... I, I mean, okay, she once she started building the machine, it didn't look like she was actively doing anything. She, she stands there for a little bit. We see her make at least one avocado man, and I mean, Incubus is just walking around around there, and then they send the avocado man to do the thing. She specifically knows about the squad. Why doesn't she go to... She, she, we know she can teleport, you know. When Harley was like, sorry, and, and supposed to be a funny little moment, that is such a cheap attempt to recapture the brilliant sorry in Avengers 2 in Hulk versus Hulkbuster fight, where it is perfect. You know, you have this, he's, he's desperately trying to subdue him, and the, you know, the, the jackhammer drill kind of punching Hulk in the face over and over and over, and then he stops, and then Hulk spits out a tooth, and you have Tony. Tony Stark, who is not a man who likes to back down from something, he's like, Sorry, and then Hulk is that's spot on, but then in this, yeah. I found June Moon's alter ego getting and wielding swords to be pretty decent. I wish she had done that more. Again, I feel like she would have taken a more proactive role. And I find, you know, a, a climax, it's, it's good for it to have a very clear goal. And I do find that, you know, I already went briefly into the, the heart, that works pretty well. You know, you, you get what they're doing and why it's going to work and the whole thing. And also the thing of luring Incubus to where the bomb is, and then you have Diablo sacrificing himself probably because he's really embarrassed about just how goofy his full-on fire form looks. You know, that's that's a pretty decent, you know, I, I will say, I mean, when he's, you know, 
dead shows, you know, with, with dead shows, like, you don't kill women or children. I don't kill women or children. I do. You know, and, and it's like the, the, you know, and, and he explains, you know, this, this thing of, you know, with the, the family and then, you know, because she, you know, yeah, the, you know, she didn't like the whole game thing and then, you know, he's like, put that back where you found it. You know, he's he's one of these, you know, he's he's got OCD. He doesn't want people to mess around with what her stuff is. And then he, you know, yeah, burns. And, and you see her body there, and then she kind of crumbles. And so, that was really creepy. And then I, I want to say it's Harley who says, you killed the children too, didn't you? And the, yeah, that was pretty good. And, and you know... And and that's where where he actually the the killer croc actually does get his moment. He swims up with the bomb. The the whole thing about you know sh do the Suicide Squad care about you know humans and should they and that I get what they were going for and it you know it's it's the kind of thing that you know it's oh it's the origin story. Why should the squad help humanity? Don't they hate them and aren't they hated by them? But then it becomes this cheesy, and that was that was hard to avoid. This shouldn't have been an origin story. We should have just been like, okay, this is, excuse me, this squad has existed, excuse me, for some time. Because once you get what the idea is, you don't need to have seen the first mission. The, you know, it's the Dirty Dozen with meta humans that's it you don't need anything more you know they're threatened into doing this and they have powers and backstories you can learn about their powers and backstories over the course of the film you don't have to have this big exposition dump and then you see them recruited one by one and just yeah And when Diablo generally says, you know, no, the, the Suicide Squad is my family. Yeah, that was really, really cheesy. How, how did Harley get to the top floor after everyone else? She was the first to go into the elevator. Yeah. I, I do like the, the little cut, you know, they like look away and suddenly she's in the elevator and she's waving at them, the whole thing. And the the gradual thing with, with Joker, you know, Griggs drops the phone for her and, you know, Deadshot specifically sees she got a message and he might, he can probably figure out it's the Joker and, you know, he's like, yeah, we're... I, I agree, let's, you know, the moment we can, we're going to get rid you know, no, 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 Joker is going to take care of the, you know, your friend is going to, you're my friend, you know, but the, the, you know, the, the gradual build, and then, you know, almost there, be ready, and then now, you know, and he's on the, the gunship. I thought the, the bit with the hallucinations for what the different squad members want was pretty decent and you know you yeah you see the the different one thing of the different thing. and Harley has this ridiculous you know white picket fence normal life kind of and you ask yeah that's Jared Leto that's no no Joker makeup Jared Leto right there and and the kids, and she looks completely normal. You know, she says, normal is the setting on a dryer. We're not normal. And then she actually presses the normal setting on the... Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I thought it was a decent moment when Rick decided to just destroy the, the phone. I think it was that he was, you know, where with the killer app, as Harleen put it. 
I guess it was a decent enough element that Amanda was actually the the person who created the problem. You know, she she didn't free June Moon's alter ego, nor put her into June Moon, but she did use June Moon to, you know, yeah, she she kept using June Moon's alter ego, and then June Moon's alter ego freed Incubus, and yeah. The one really predictable bit was when they realize what's really going on. You know, this is not a terrorist attack. No, no, no. This is June Moon's alter ego, and you know, oh, this is all Amanda Waller's fault. Okay, let's go grab a drink, and then we'll go and do the mission, and just yeah. And you know they they're like okay we have to get the HVT one okay and then they go oh and it's Amanda Waller and then they they grab her and put her on a helicopter then the helicopter crashes and then you know the it's it's this common thing of the the protagonists will win some in in recent action movies but though now I just watch comic book adaptation action moves pretty much so I can only speak to them but yeah you know the protagonist will seem to you know yeah the protagonist will fail and that means that the the antagonists get a win and then at the very end it's resolved so yeah I do think it was a decent twist that that was Waller that was HVT1 and that also fits the comics that she would you know she herself might end up in danger and yeah and I do think that it made good sense that, you know once once June Moon's alter ego has freed you know has, has gotten the the thing for Incubus well what you know she she need she wants a lot of goons so she travels to midway and then takes over this one guy and you know and i do also like i th thought it was a cool kind of visual and such the you know several people fall into and then he goes down onto the tracks and s takes some power from the excuse me and then he arises as incubus because it would have been kind of ridiculous if one person just grew like that. That would have looked silly and, and not really fit. But yeah, you know, then Jun Moon's alter ego can start turning people into avocado men. And when Harley when when Joker disables Harley's you know kill switch and then you know Amanda Waller of course turns it back on. And then, you know, Deadshot pretends to shoot her and miss. I feel like, again, that, you know, the... For one thing, um, you know, they could have threatened... I want to say Amanda is on the roof there with them. For, uh, otherwise, just Rick. And another thing, is she really that far away already? It... No, no, she specifically what she jumped onto and then she's hanging from the He's not the only one with a gun. He, he, grab his gun if if the issue is you don't have a good enough scope or rifle or whatever. It's you know, it's not a it's not a million and watt shot, kid. And the, let's see.
I suppose that might be more of this. What? And on those. The, you know, it appears that Batfleck lost a Robin with Joker having killed him ten years before the events of Dawn of Justice. And I worried and wondered if Joker would be defeated here in Suicide Squad. In this movie, you know, it couldn't possibly have the impact that, you know, it does in the comics that when, you know, yeah, the, the, and I guess it's supposed to be that this is the first time Joker has been seen in 10 years. I mean, if Joker is out and about and has been for 10 years, well, then again, you know, I'm still not sure if Batfleck stopped for those 10 years or if he just, yeah, but, and, and, you know, the, for, for those who haven't read the comic and haven't, you know, the, that, that Robin is dead is still not really spelled out here. I guess they're saving that for the Bat, you know, the Batflex solo movie, which is again, why is Joker in this? When, you know, Batflex and Joker barely even interact in this. You know, he's, they're, they're inches apart because of the, the car roof, but that's it. The rest of the movie, Batfleck has nothing to do with Joker, while Joker is, you know, roaming around Midway City looking for Harley and actually getting incredibly close to Harley. I, I guess Amanda Waller wouldn't be sharing information with Batfleck at that point. But, yeah, it's just, I, I don't think that the Joker being, it's especially when they established, and they established in Dawn of Justice, this Batfleck lost a Robin, the Joker killed him. You know, you see, you know, jokes on you. And Zack Snyder has said it's not that this, actually, yeah, yeah, Zack Snyder has said that this is not, this Joker is not a former Robin, but even if that were the case, it's still and and they didn't they didn't have to be Joker did not need to be in this movie. And you know, and in the comic, basically Joker looked like he might have died and he suddenly disappeared very soon after the the death of the Robin. And then when they did the follow-up comic where Robin you know, where where the Joker turns out to have come back. We only learn that at the very end. By then, he has helped create a new Robin. You know, it's it's not just Nightwing who becomes Robin again. So there's this good symmetry where, you know, Robin disappears, Joker disappears, and the basically the three of them go together somewhat. And... Yeah, you know, here we have Joker reappearing, possibly reappearing after 10 years, and there's no new Robin. And plus, Batfleck is not a very big part of this. I was relieved that Batfleck in this does not spare anyone for their first name. No one is like, Martha, Martha, Martha. You know, it recently occurred to me that in Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, Superman puts Nuclear Man inside of this elevator where the, the sun, the rays of the sun can't go into, so he actually stuck him somewhere the sun don't shine. In one of the comics, Deadshot is blinded in one eye because he's using the infrared lens just as someone lights fire right in front of him. I, I 
think that it would have been cool to have not necessarily that exact thing, but something clever like that. Someone losing their ability because of something like that. And I get why, since it is the first, but given the comics, it is a little too bad that not very many major characters really die or get really seriously injured. You know, there hasn't been a lot of major or main character death in comic films other than the villains, and since here the villains are the protagonists, not heroes, anti-heroes at best, I, I do think that it would have been, you know, basically there's Diablo sacrificing himself and then, you know, I want to, did, yeah, I, I and, and then you, of course, have the, you know, Slipknot gets killed so that they show that the kill switch is for real. Did Killer Croc die at the end? I don't... Didn't he swim away before they used the charge? He attached it and then swam away, I want to say. I've read other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.